All right, it looks like we're at the top of the hour. Um, welcome everyone to this webinar for Reload for Groupwise. My name is Q Mangus. I'm the Director of Product Marketing here at Microfocus. We're going to be starting off with, with Tay Krasser. He's going to be presenting the information here today. He's the lead developer for Reload for Groupwise. And we're really grateful that you could be here today and, uh, and hope you can benefit from the information that we're going to be presenting. Um, as we go through the presentation, if there's any uh, questions that you do have, feel free to put those through in the questions panel there in the, in the GoToWebinar uh, UI. And we'll be sure to take those questions as we go along. We'll also have some time at the end for Q&A. Um, just a couple of things to take note of. This webinar is being recorded, so uh, if you want to go back and review anything that we've talked about, uh, you can go back and do that. We'll be sending you a link to this recording uh, once the webinar has completed. Um, once again, thanks everyone for being here, and we want to thank especially Tay for uh, his time and for presenting this information, and hope you can all benefit from this information about uh, backup and disaster recovery for GroupWise. So we'll go ahead and give the time to Tay and uh, have him uh, lead out here. Thank you everyone again for coming. We really appreciate your time, and uh, I hope this is valuable for you. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, show a presentation for just a few minutes. Um, uh, I've got a little slideshow that introduces Reload for GroupWise, and then we're going to demonstrate several things so that you can really see the utility of, of uh, this solution. Um, so um, let's just talk about Reload for GroupWise and, and what it does for those of you with GroupWise systems. Um, it saves time, and we will demonstrate that, uh, reduces complexity. Um, uses your resources efficiently, your backup resources, um, and it works hand in glove with GroupWise. And you'll see all of these things demonstrated today. Um, so the, I, I, I tried to come up with an example of other backup solutions versus reload. Now, um, there's some pretty good backup solutions out there, but the notion, the thing that um, really is a struggle is, is how to restore GroupWise data from those backup solutions. So you might feel like you've got a pretty nifty backup solution, but restoring data can be painful. Whereas with Reload, um, you've got this fine-tuned uh, way of both backing up and restoring. Um, restoring isn't an afterthought. Um, it's, it's thought about just as diligently as the backup process. And so that's the experience that you have with Reload. And again, we'll demonstrate all of these things. So Let's talk about how reload saves time in, in a matter of minutes, and we will, we will demonstrate every single one of these things here. Um, you can restore single messages, multiple messages, address books, uh, or an entire mailbox um, can be restored. Um, and there's even a feature in Reload called Auto Reload. Just, you just have to turn it on. And, and um, with that, uh, end users can access the most current backup without ever even having to you know, contact the help desk. Um, and uh, it's utilizing features that are built right into GroupWise. So really powerful feature. And in fact, when I was first making this software, the, the, the specification from the customer was, they said, you know, 75% of the time, what we need is the most current backup. And, and, and the rest of the time, we need something from the last couple of weeks, typically. And so, uh, so I thought, well, hey, why don't we just make that backup available without having anybody, you know, uh, needing to contact anybody else. They can just self-serve. And again, we'll demonstrate that. Another thing is um, reload reduces complexity. You know, if you have a disaster on your post office um, or domain, um, all you have to do um, is push a button and um, switch the DNS A record for the post office of the domain, um, or if you don't have DNS names, uh, change the IP address inside of Group I's administration, and then the system discovers where the post office is. So um, it's very, very simple. We'll demonstrate that. Accessing a backup, um, so let's say a user wants a backup from a few days ago. Um, you simply have to go in there, select the backup, uh, wait for a, a very short period of time and uh, just so that programmatically can flip a couple things and that backup is available um, to the end users um, to be able to access. 
And uh, something that's really nice is because of the architecture, quite frankly, the architecture of GroupWise, Reload is leveraging some really, really neat aspects of GroupWise so that you can store a couple weeks worth of backups with only two and a half times the size of the post office required on the Reload server. So just to give you an example, if you had a post office that was 100 gigs in size, then you'd need about 250 gigabytes on the Reload server to maintain um, what's called a profile, a, a reload profile for that post office, um, and uh, 14 days worth of backups. Um, so instead of, you know, um, you know, every reload backup is effectively, uh, it's as though it's a full backup, meaning that it's entirely, um, uh, it's, a, it's a hot backup that's entirely accessible to you uh, as a group-wise post office. Um, but uh, rather than being 1.4 terabytes uh, in size, um, you know, 14 instances of 100 gig post office, it's only 2.5 times the size of the post office, or about 250 gigabytes. Each backup replicates, you know, as little as 4% and up to 12% of the size of the post office. This is approximately. It just kind of depends how you design some things and reload. So um, there's, you know, every backup is effectively full backup, but we only have to replicate anywhere from 4 to 12% of the size of the post office um, and then store that on the reload server. So uses your band fish, bandwidth efficiently um, and also the disk space on the reload server. And because we have to pull across so little data, we're not sitting there um, spending a lot of time, uh, CPU cycles and so forth, uh, against your live server in order to back up the data. And <clears throat> Reload works hand in glove. I'm just going to take a sip of water here for a minute. Mm. Reload works hand in glove with GroupWise. So some examples of that. You know, uh, items can't be purged um, from the uh, GroupWise mailbox until, until such time they're backed up by Reload. Now, that's a feature you have to turn on inside of GroupWise. But once you do so, um, Reload integrates with that uh, instantly. Um, it also integrates with what's called the GroupWise Restore Area, which is a really powerful feature when it comes to restoring email for users. And, uh, and there's nothing to install to your clients and no rights that you have to assign and so forth. So setting up for Restore Areas is, is typically about a 15-minute process. You do it one time and you, you don't have to do anything beyond that and your users have access to the backups that are on the reload server. And again, we'll demonstrate that. Some other notable features is something that uh, I've noticed over the years with Reload. Uh, Reload's been been out for over 10 years now, and something that customers really, really like is it's just set it and forget it. It just runs. Um, that's a pleasure for customers. It's a pleasure for support. Uh, it just runs, uh, rarely gives people any troubles. Um, and what's nice is you can get a daily status report. Um, it's just one email, no matter how many profiles you have on your Reload server. So, so a profile is um, defined per post office or per, per domain. And so you can have up to 20 post offices and 20 domains backed up to a reload server. And, uh, but, the, but you just get one consolidated status report um, you know, telling you the status of, of the, the health of um, uh, the, all of the profiles in one um, individual status message. And so uh, it's really powerful, just you know, a very simple way of communication to you in one status message. And then there's uh, integration with Nagios and PRTG if you happen to have those, th those uh, monitoring solutions, which is really nice. Um, it also has tape backup, a very rich tape backup integration uh, solution. Um, and uh, where we can create a tar file, uh, we can execute uh, custom commands and so forth in conjunction with that for customers that are really into tape technology. That can be, it's, it's really quite a pleasure. Um, and then um, another notable feature is easy migration post-disaster. Um, so if you've had a disaster and you cut over to your reload server and you use it for you know, perhaps a few days and then uh, you've got a new server, um, migrating the data vis-a-vis uh, -vis reload is uh, very, very simple, um, very straightforward. And in fact, a lot of customers have used the migration functionality inside of reload to help to migrate from you know, uh, one server to the next, uh, even if they didn't have a disaster. 
And um, another couple notable features here, um, every reload backup can be um, replicated to up to three locations. So, um, and in fact, I'll show you today, we've got uh, a group-wise server and then we've got two reload servers. And so kind of simulating the notion of, you know, you, you've got an on-site backup and then an off-site backup. Now, um, you know, the advantage to that is, uh, you know, you think about a site disaster, you know, let's say you had some kind of a problem in the server room and the sprinklers went off. Well, your reload server would probably be just as wet as your group-wise server. And so, um, you know, having an off-site server might be of interest in that kind of a scenario, or you might have a, um, a partner that you might work with that could help to provide that for you. A um, couple other things is the ability to, to freeze backups for later use. So, you know, you go in and you define how many backups that you want Reload to keep because you can't just keep in an indefinite amount uh, because of disk space requirements. But you can go in and say, oh, you know what, I, I need to use this backup. I, do, I don't want it to roll off. And you can freeze that backup. And it doesn't impact, um, you know, what you've indicated for the number of backups to, uh, to keep. Um, it uh, gets its additive, and so you'll still keep 14 other backups, and then the one that you've frozen, and then you can go in and use it until such time that you're done, and then you can just unfreeze the backup. And then finally, there's a, there's a, a, a solution called Blueprint for Reload. So here's the idea. Is it's um, reporting um, on the group-wise message store, um, and we'll show you these reports here a little bit later. But it shows you um, quite a bit of information about each one of the mailboxes and a cumulative report about each of the mailboxes um, all combined into one little report. Um, and... Uh, and then a CSV file that you can look at. Anyways, the goal behind this software is to derive information that you couldn't derive any other way about the group wise message store at a particular post office level. Um, and the neat thing is, the, the reason it's called Blueprint for Reload is, rather than us tickling and teasing the live system to get this information, we use the data sitting on the reload server. Why not? It's, it's you know, recently been obtained from your group wise system, and so it's sufficient for a creating those reports. Okay, so one last thing about the architecture of reload. So typically you just have a reload server um, and that reload server um, is on the Celeste platform. Um, and so um, that that Celeste server can then back up group by's post offices and domains on Linux um, or Windows uh, or NetWare, um, but not too many people are NetWare any longer, but um, will back up those platforms. Um, there's also an agent, or we call it a collector, um, and that can run on a Celeste server also. Um, and uh, there's some advantages to uh, to that architecture, particularly when you're, you're looking at offsite backups and so forth. So that's it. Uh, we've given you a, a general understanding of um, Reload, and so I'm going to just take off right now and start demonstrating um, some, some key factors uh, with Reload. Now, um, today is the 22nd. Um, these items uh, have all been backed up. Uh, they're from yesterday. Um, so they should have been backed up. And so in theory, I can go ahead and delete these items. Okay. And so let's just go ahead and demonstrate me deleting a whole bunch of items. Now you notice my trash um, is empty. Okay. And so I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to just whack a bunch of items. I'm just going to say delete and empty. Now you'll notice that my trash, um, oh, okay, my, my trash is showing, showing that some of the items didn't delete and that's probably, okay, here we go. It's because they came in today. So let me explain that. Why, um, oh, sorry, that's the deleted date. Um, the reason you can't delete items um, that came in recently, let me just show this to you here. If I create an email and I say a user, test one, test one, send, okay. Um, if I highlight that item and I say delete and empty, okay, notice my trash is at six and it will increment to seven. And the reason that is, is, is that item hasn't been backed up yet um, by by reload. And so um, GroupWise is saying, well, it hasn't been backed up by reload yet. And so we won't allow you to delete the item. Okay. So the only items I'll be able to delete are items that have been backed up. And so I'm going to do a 
you know, certainly these items have been backed up. I'm going to do right mouse click and I'm going to say delete and empty. Okay, and those items are truly gone. So you, you notice my, my total count has gone down here. Okay, um, and now what I can do is, is an end user. Now I don't even have to call the administrator because the most current backup is made available to the end users vis-a-vis -vis a feature called um, auto, uh, auto reload or auto restore. And so this is the idea is, is we've set up what's called a restore area, uh, reload the last time that it performed a backup, linked the restore area location to the most current backup. And so when I select backup here, um, I'm going to have available to me all of these items that I can restore. And so then I can just go here and do a shift click, right mouse click, restore. And bink, those items go right back into my mailbox. And you can see that we've incremented there. Now, let's just kind of understand this architecture for a minute. And so we're gonna kind of do kind of like a little group-wise demonstration here for a moment. So I want you to understand how this all works. Um, first off, we have a reload server, okay? So this is this is the reload server that's backing up my group-wise mailbox um, and the post office specifically that I'm on. I'm on a post office called PO1 and um, it's at this IP address, uh, 101271. And that server, uh, the 101271 server, has an NFS mount here to this reload server, okay? It has a persistent NFS client mount to the reload server. That way, whatever backup that I make available inside of reload is accessible to the end users. Um, and the way that it's accessible is, is if I go to system, I go to restore area management, you see this? This is a mount point off of mount, mount backup. Um, that is a mount point over to the reload server, all right? And so when the user does this backup option, um, it reads that record, okay, the restore area, and it says to the group-wise POA, it says, hey, uh, can you go to um, mount backup connect restore and see if there's a group-wise post office there and make it accessible to me because I can't get there, um, but perhaps you can. And so um, the group-wise server says, sure, I can do that. Let me just clear this screen here so you can see how this works. So mount backup connect, okay. And you notice that restore, okay, that again, that correlates with right here, right? mount backup connect restore, that here on my group wise server, that correlates with this backup from Tuesday, February 21st, okay? So super powerful. Now, if I went in here, I could go to a, a different backup. So let's go to, oh, um, all right. I thought I had some from the day before, but I didn't. I guess I just set this all up yesterday. So I, um, so let's, let's uh, select, uh, that backup, okay? So you can just see how this looks on disk. Um, okay, you see that? See how we selected Tuesday, February 21st, and it was the uh, it was a it was a, an older backup that it created on that particular day, um, and it flipped us to that backup. So that's what's accessible to the users at this point. Okay, um, I'm going to go back to using the original backup. Um, and uh, for our demonstration purposes, oh, that's the wrong browser window, sorry. Uh, here we go, okay. So let's turn that off. That's how simply you can access um, or turn off access to a backup. Um, so I'm gonna just say here, turn on backup, uh, the, the most current backup. And the reason is, is for some demonstration purposes that we're gonna be showing you some more things here on. So um, I hope you get a sense of how that works um, and how simple it is for an end user to restore items. Um, and uh, you know, if they needed to restore items from a few days ago, you'd have to get involved. If they just needed to get from the most current backup, you don't even have to get involved.
Okay, let's uh, demonstrate something else, okay? Let's imagine that um, I've got in my address book, I've got a address book called My Favorite Users, okay? Now, uh, sometimes users have a problem where an address book gets corrupt or it gets deleted, and so let's just simulate that right now, okay? I'm gonna delete um, this address book, okay? And now I need to get that back, okay? Um, so I call the help desk, hey, can you help me get an address book back? And uh, what's great is, is um, you know, the, the restore area feature of GroupWise doesn't allow you to do like backup and then access some kind of a um, address book. You can't do that in any manner, but um, GroupWise, um, uh, the, the GroupWise POA is loaded on the reload server against, you know, whichever backup I've um, uh, accessed. And so there's a, this is an actual POA that I can point my client to. So that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out of my client, okay, and I've got a little, a little icon on my desktop um, to make this easier, but I'm going to get out of my client and then I'll show you that I'm going to connect to this IP address. So my original IP address is 101271. That's where my post office is. But now I'm accessing the reload server at 101273. Okay. So now I'm actually inside of the backup on the reload server. Okay. And you can see there's that address book, my favorite users. Why? Because we're in the we're in a, you know, we're in a time machine. We're looking at a backup of the, the, the post office prior to when I deleted this address book. Now, what I'll do is, is I'm gonna export that address book, okay? And I'm gonna say, you know, you know, my favorite users, okay, there we go. And we've now exported that address book, so I'm gonna disconnect from this uh, uh, reload server POA instance, and I'm going to go right back in to my production mailbox. Okay, notice that we're at 101271. And of course, you can see here that that address book is, isn't there because uh, uh, it, uh, it got deleted. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Tools, Address Book. And I'm going to say, let's do a file new book. Okay, my favorite users okay and there we've made the we've made the book but there's no one inside of it okay but then I'm going to do um, an import and um, you remember we put it here my favorite users .nab, okay and I'm going to say put it into that location and there we go we've got these two users um, you know, and of course you typically have, you know, many more users in an address book, but this is good for dem demonstration purposes. So I've now restored, um, this, uh, address book for this particular user. Okay. So we've demonstrated now restoring emails and restoring, a, restoring an address book. Now let's give you a different scenario. Um, in fact, this is a scenario I ran into just yesterday. We had a customer, um, they had a user, I'm going to take a drink, drink water here. They had a user who um, went in and they used uh, the search feature inside of GroupWise, and they found uh, a bunch of items uh, of a particular thing that they were searching for. And while they were um, in this this particular dialog box, they then um, somehow deleted a whole bunch of items. Okay, um, and so they they just went in and. And, and deleted a bunch of stuff um, and, and did that by accident. Um, and, but they didn't delete you know, everything in their mailbox. They just deleted um, probably about 5,000 items or so. This is a user that had, I think, 25 to 30,000 items. So, and, and, the, and the items were spread in amongst you know, different folders and stuff. It was a pretty elaborate folder system that they had. And, and, and they just wanted to you know, kind of rewind and, and get those items back. And so um, let's, let's simulate that for a moment and, and show you a, a powerful way to get the data. Because again, if the stuff's intermixed amongst a bunch of folders, yes, you've got this open backup feature, 
but that could be kind of annoying having to kind of sift through different folders and try and get items back. Um, but, uh, but, but there's a really cool feature inside of GroupWise to resolve that. So I'm just going to go in here and I'm just going to whack, you know, 533 items and let's just imagine they're interspersed amongst a bunch of folders okay so i'm going to say yes and so notice i'm down at 11,017 items okay now you as an administrator can do something here that's really cool you can go to the user okay and you can go to more and restore Okay, and it says, hey, you've already defined a restore area for this post office. Do you want to restore all the items for user A? You say yes. Okay, and the most current backup is what's accessible to us. And so what's going to happen, the user, um, the user's mailbox will start populating. Oh, there we go. See the, see the items? It went so fast. <laughs> um, we now have all of the items back. Everything's been restored. So what happened was when we were in GroupWise administration and we restored the items for those users, a message was sent to the POA. The POA went and looked at the restore area, which is just an NFS client mount over to the reload server, said, hey, what's in, what's in the restore area or this, you know, this backup of the GroupWise post office? What's in there that's not in the live mailbox? And I'll put that in. So it doesn't duplicate anything in there. That's what's really cool. It's not like it's going to go, oh, I got all this stuff, and so I'm going to make a duplicate. Uh -uh. It's only going to put in the deltas or what's in the uh, backup that's not uh, in the production post office. Okay, So you can see that's a super powerful feature, great way to restore mail for, for users when when they've got a you know a bunch of stuff um, that needs to be restored. Another powerful feature, uh, powerful, um, well, another neat thing about that feature is, is, is the fact that, you know, let's say you have users with web access. Uh, in web access, there's no file open backup feature. Um, but, uh, and so if you had users that use web access exclusively and they needed items restored, you could go in and you could just um, restore them uh, inside of GroupWise administration. Now it might give them a little bit more than they wanted, um, um, you know, might go, well, I didn't want that. Well, that's no problem. They can delete it again, but they get all the items back that they that they actually wanted to keep. So another powerful feature. Now, let's talk about a, one of our favorite topics. Um, and uh, rarely does a month go by that I don't get a call uh, like this. Um, you know, uh, I slipped on a banana. I uh, hit the delete key. Um, on when I when I was uh, highlighting an end user and hit OK and boink the user's gone. <laughs> I need to restore their mail. Well, let's just walk through that scenario, okay? Um, I want to first just demonstrate this for you. I've got a couple different users. I've got this user user C, and we're going to log in with their super secret password here. Now, um, user C has a couple emails. They're a legitimate user and uh, but let's say that that user gets deleted. So I'm going to log out as them, and um, I'm going to go to the user. Okay, there's user C. All right, and I'm going to say delete. Okay, all right. Okay, shoot, they're gone. Okay, um, and uh, you know, think about what you would have to go through uh, in your environment in order to to resolve this. Let's show you how what you do inside of Reload. Now, it's the most current backup. I, I could go in here and I could say, hey, let's uh, select a backup from another day. And I would have you know several days listed here, most likely. But uh, because this just happened, my most recent backup is going to be sufficient. So I just click here. So this is my domain backup. So, so let me just explain to you what we need to do. We first need to restore the user's object, OK? And then we need to restore their mail, OK? So let's walk through that process. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to select the most current backup of the domain. It's just available to me here. It comes down as a zip, okay? And I'm going to say, okay, great. That's the that's the contents of the zip, okay? I'm going to extract all these files, and there we go. And I'm just going to um, extract them to the restore directory, okay? And I'm going to say... Um, Okay, there we go. So now I, I demonstrated this earlier today, and so that's why I already had them there. But anyways, so now here we've got this WP domain DB, and let me just show you. There's a little there's a little manifest file inside of here. It says when this backup went on and so forth. And so I can go. Okay, that went on at you know this morning, and you know now 
this back this deletion went on around 7:30 or so. So great, that that's a good backup. That's the one that's going to have the user I um, deleted uh, represented inside of the WP domain DB. So now I'm going to go into GroupWise administration. Okay, of course I only have the two users, and I'm going to go to System. And I'm going to say re recover deleted account. I'm going to say choose a file. Okay, here we go. This is this file that uh, I extracted. Okay, and it says account to recover. Hey, there's user C. Okay, I'm going to say OK, and I'm going to say recover. There we go. And we see this little message, it recovered successfully, done. I go to users, okay, and there's the user. I'm just going to set their password here so I can log in and just kind of demonstrate this for you. Okay, I'm going to go back to Group Eyes Administration, okay, and I'm going to type in user C. Now, what you're going to observe is, is I'm going to be able to get in but there's no mail. You know, why? Well, because we we restored the object, but we haven't restored their mail. Okay, so how would I do that? I just go to more and restore. And yes, done. Go here. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Dink. And there's the the you know their mailbox entirely restored. Of course, they only had two items, but nonetheless, you get the idea. So we demonstrated you know a user being deleted and then being restored and their messages being restored. Uh, very simple, um, all using uh, reload as the you know restore mechanism. So I ho hope you see how you know having a backup solution that works hand in glove with Groupwise is super powerful when it comes to restoring data. And, and we take restoring data just as seriously as backing up data. And, and, uh, and that's, a, that's a really defining difference behind reload. OK, so now I've shown all that nifty stuff, how to restore uh, items. Um, let's talk about disaster recovery, OK? Let's imagine that you had a disaster. Um, and you finally are like, OK, I'm going to cut over to the reload server. What do you do? OK, well, um, you click on a button. OK, um, you click on the ambulance button and here's, you know, the, the, the set of things that go on is uh, it, you know, says, OK, I'm going to switch this profile to disaster recovery mode. Um, it won't try and attempt to do backups to a server that's no longer there. Um, and uh, we're going to make sure we don't have any port conflicts. That way, if you've got another POA loaded for this particular profile, we're going to unload it. Um, we're going to load um, a you know, a, a group-wise POA listening at that IP address and these various different ports. So 1677, 7181 is the HTTP port, okay? And so I've now just confirmed that that POA came up, okay? And, um, and it's ready to talk to an MTA and so forth. So we've got a fully functional group-wise post office um, over on the reload server. I didn't have to go in and say, oh, yeah, let's combine this backup set with this backup set and, you know, all these other machinations and so forth. We just literally had to push a button. Now, that's not entirely what you need to do. You need to go into your DNS and say, hey, you know, um, this is the um, IP address that correlates with the uh, A record for the POA, or you would go into group wise administration and you would say, hey, you know what, uh, you know, this this post office agent uh, is, uh, you know, not at 101271, but it's at 101273, okay, uh, which is my uh, reload server here, you see. And so um, I've got a, oh, Sorry, let me close out of that. I've got a uh, another icon here that I can click on, and it's just pointed to 101273. Um, and so now we're in my, you know, fully functional uh, group-wise uh, system hosted now, at least the post office is hosted over on the reload server. And it's the same thing. I'm not going to belabor it, but it's the same thing with a domain. You just click on the ambulance button and you can um, fire up the MTA for a failed uh, server and so forth. So super powerful push button disaster recovery. OK, um, and uh, um, I'm going to turn that off here for a minute. but. Um, now let's talk about disaster recovery too in in this this realm. Um, uh, 
So you've got this on-site reload server, okay. Um, what about an off-site reload server? This this is something, you know, this is really thinking about disaster recovery and, you know, what if you had a site disaster or something like that? How would you resolve that? Well, what's really slick is, is this is, um, so I've got this reload server that's representing a reload server that's on-site, and this is a reload server that's off-site, okay? And uh, this off-site reload server, um, we just keep just a couple different backups on this one. Um, so the disk space requirements for this server are less than the disk space requirements for here. Here we intend to keep 14 backups. Here we just keep a couple backups um, because it's really just for disaster recovery purposes, whereas this is for backup and disaster recovery purposes, okay? Um, so you remember I talked about how you can go in and you can define um, multiple locations for a backup to go to. And so that's exactly what's happened here is, is we've indicated, hey, when you perform this backup of this post office, uh, replicate the data to 10.1.273 and 10.1.274. And uh, so that's the, you know, IP addresses for both of these reload, oh, sorry, both of these reload servers. And so that's what you're observing here. All right, so we've shown you uh, the ability to replicate to multiple locations. We've shown you push button disaster recovery. Um, and so um, let's just uh, review. I've got some notes here and I wanna make sure I cover everything that I need to. Um, and, uh, yeah, so let's talk about um, Blueprint, and then I will be at a point where I can take some questions uh, if, if needs be. Um, I'm going to, in fact, I want to show you a different system over here. Here we go. Here's a system that I have access to up at uh, Microfocus, actually. Um, this is uh, part of uh, one of their uh, live reload servers. And... Um, um, and here's uh, another reload server. This is in their development environment. And uh, what, one thing that I want to show you is, is when you, you know, we've got reload in some rather large environments and, and uh, um, I, you know, I've been working with systems and systems administrations for many, many years. And I appreciate that, you know, when you need to go to make a change, excuse me, to um, to a setting when you're like, oh, hey, I discovered this new setting. Uh, yeah, I want all my profiles to have that. Um, gee, uh, I've got, you know, 20 post offices I now have to configure, you know, the profile for, right? Um, well, if this is a really uh, slick feature for those of you with larger systems, you appreciate stuff like this. So you take that panel um, and any one of these panels has this, you know, configure all profiles. Anyways, that panel is then um, exposed for each one of the profiles. So I could go in here and make the, the change that I wanted and make the change I wanted, you know, whatever it be, and uh, and do it very simply rather than having to click into um, all of these different profiles. So it's uh, very, very friendly to larger environments just as it is with small environments, okay? Um, but I also wanna show you here uh, blueprint reports now. Um, I'm now trying to remember, I think this system has Blueprint installed. Okay, here we go. And this, okay, I might have to go to a different location. Let me go to, that's a better location. All right, so let's go here and Go to Blueprint Reports, okay. And okay, so this is, uh, it's really kind of cool. Um, this this Blueprint Report, um, again, it runs on the um, reload server and it's deriving this information from this post office that's sitting on um, the reload server, okay? And so we're able to, and, and you typically have these blueprint jobs, you just schedule them, they just run typically um, once a week. And uh, what it'll do is, is it will make a cumulative report. Now you can see this one hasn't run for quite a while, but, um, but nonetheless, it shows this cumulative information, you know, items under 90 days, items over, over 90 days, you know, what's used by inactive mailboxes. This is really helpful when you're going to implement an archive solution such as Retain, because you can really get a sense of, of you know, what the magnitude, the impact that retain can have for, for good on your 
production system if you decide to put in some kind of a policy. You can change these values. You, you don't have to define just 90 days. You could indicate whatever it is that you'd like. And uh, so anyways, we have this cumulative report about the entire post office. And then we have these individual reports about each ind individual. And then we have what's called action items. And so here it's identified these users that uh, have been inactive. Their mail accounts have been inactive for for quite a while and and so it's like oh that's that's an action item maybe we can uh, you know archive off their data and and uh, and no longer have them uh, inside of uh, group wise but have them in retain for example uh, which is another product that we have and so uh, a powerful report and there's um, also uh, CSV reports that that pull down quite a bit more information this has got um, I can't remember, I think about a dozen data points. The CSV file has about 40 data points about each um, mailbox. And uh, so then you can take and you can sort, let's say you're trying to find who's got the largest mailboxes, you can find who has the largest mailboxes with a simple uh, sort inside of your spreadsheet. So um, that is, I'm trying to see, I'm gonna look at my notes here for a moment, see if I've covered everything that I wanted to today. Um, uh, not to belabor the point, but something that you will um, really enjoy about Reload is um, the fact that you get these daily um, status reports. There's error notification, warning notification. So that's something that, uh, uh, you know, in, in managing systems, you know, <laughs> who, who wants to know about an error um, when you suddenly have to act on it? Sure nice to have kind of a buildup to the error. And so that's what's nice about a warning notification. Um, and so uh, it uh, respects the time that you have uh, that, that you need to allocate when, when a situation starts to degrade. Um, and yeah, I think we've covered about everything that I wanted to today. So I'm at the point where um, I'm ready to take any questions that we might have. Um, and so I'm going to ask Q if he's gotten any questions as of yet. Yes, there, there's a number of questions here, so we'll go ahead and uh, get to those. So um, the first one is, um, does reload include the function to backup retain? Good question. Uh, that's a that's an extra module. In fact, you you probably you might have seen that. Um, so this is an extra module. So when you um, go in and you um, uh, put in a license for reload for retain, um, then that option will be this panel will open up for you. And then yes, we have a, a very good backup solution for retain. Um, and in fact, uh, I, I'm I'm implementing them uh, every week at, at different locations. Um, and <clears throat> you know, something that's really, really cool about Reload for Retain is, is the backup speed. That's where no other solution can really hold a candle to uh, Reload for Retain, is the speed in which it backs things up. So just to give an example, um, we've got uh, the customer I made this for originally, their backups prior to Reload for Retain were taking about 40, back, uh, 40 hours, sorry, 40 hours to do a backup. Their backups now take less than an hour. And uh, the reason is, is because we don't have to thrash around on the disk looking for stuff, um, but the very first time, the very first time we have to, like any other backup software, every other time we go, we go straight into the database and the database tells us what's new. And so, um, so we aren't limited like all other backup solutions at having to look at what's on disk. We look at what's in the database and we get a very, very good um, uh, you know, indication very quickly what we need to replicate. And so even if there's you know, you know, 50,000 things that came in in a day, well, it's no big deal. We replicate that in a short period of time. So um, probably need to talk about Reload for Retain in another demonstration, but yes, there is a backup solution for Retain um, with Reload. And we do have a webinar where we touched on that. If you go to Gua, if you go to youtubecom slash guava TV, you can uh, you can access that. Um, let's see. Another question that came through is, is it a common use of reload if I have remote groupwise uh, domains in post offices to back them up from a central location? Yes. In fact, what's really nice is this collector model. So let me just show this to you here because I just kind of brushed over it for a minute. There's a couple different ways to approach backups. Um, 
prior to Reload 5, the, the latest version that we're using, um, if you needed to do a backup, you had to get what's called an NFS mount to you know where the post office was, if it was on Linux, Windows or Linux or, or so forth. Um, now we've put we've created what's called a collector, and this 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 is this server is actually the Groupwise server, and so we have this little component, the Reload collector, installed on the Groupwise. Uh, post office uh, server, and there's a post office and a domain, and that uh, post office and domain is then being replicated to um, the central reload server. Now, again, you only see, you know, one post office and one domain, but I could easily have, you know, 20 post offices and 20 domains, and this collector is would represent one of the post offices and one of the domains, and then I'd have collectors installed on these other servers that would be be pushing um, the you know post office and domain to you know uh, to my reload server. In fact, I could have it pushing it to you know another reload server. Uh, another thing also that you could design, um, rather than having your group by server have to talk to two different reload servers, if you were ever want to do this, um, you, you would actually you could actually go in and and design it that you install collectors on your one reload server and then have the, it replicate the data to yet another reload server. That's pretty advanced stuff, but just just something that uh, that you can also design, and it's it's all documented and well understood. But um, so yeah, that you would have one central reload server, um, and you know it's some one of your locations, and then you would have uh, the data replicated vis-a-vis -vis these reload collectors um, to the. Uh, the central reload server, and you notice this little this little tilde here, that's uh, to kind of help you to to see the difference between um, a uh, collector versus uh, just a regular uh, reload server uh, profile. Okay, great. The next one is um, does does disaster recovery also start a groupwise administration service, and what about GUIA? Good question. Real good question. So, what you would have to do for that scenario is is um, there's not really a way to back up a GUI up, for example. Um, and yes, um, so so here's what I would do in your environment is, and in fact, I do this in every environment. I'd encourage this. Is what you do is is you install a group by secondary. You you create a group by secondary domain, and where do you put it? Put it right on your reload server. Okay, you just you just host it. So it's it's a production secondary domain, and you do this well before the disaster. You just make it as a participating domain in your system. Okay, so then what that does for you is you now have an administration base that's available on your reload server. Okay, and then what you would do is is you might as well attach a GUIA right there. Put a GUIA right on that secondary domain, and here's the function that it would have: is is you could then go inside of the group by administration and define it as a secondary GUIA. That's kind of an advanced concept. It's a groupwise concept, but um, you have in groupwise, it's built into groupwise in which you can say, hey, when you're sending uh, email to the internet, uh, use this GUIA. Oh, but you know what? If that GUIA is down, use this other GUIA. And so you literally could design it that you have all the components in place that as soon as your your system you know comes up on the reload server, and um, and it can't get a hold of you know that that GUIA that would have been over on your production server that's now down gone whatever, um, it, the system will automatically without you having to make any changes will automatically route the emails out through that secondary GUIA that you've defined off of a secondary domain that you already designed to be hosted on the reload server. So that's that's how you would design that for ultimate uh, disaster recovery. So great question. And that looks like all the questions we have uh, at this time. Okay, great. Well, um, Q, we could, I could take more time or we could wrap this up. I could talk about reload for retain. Um, uh, do you have any recommendations, Q? <laughs> Not to put you on the spot. <laughs> yeah, um, I think we have a couple of minutes, um, and um, we could go ahead and uh, if if uh, people want to step off, um, they can go ahead and leave the webinar. If you want to stick around and view more about Reload for Retain, we do have about 10 more minutes of time dedicated to it, so we can definitely uh, go over that. Um, so for those of you who want to stick around and view that, please do. Um, thanks everyone for being on this webinar, if if you do need to uh, step off. so. Um, and thanks, Tay, for the information about uh, Reload for Groupwise. Great information. Yeah, we'll, we'll give a few minutes to uh, to go over uh, Reload for Retain.
Great, sounds good. So here's what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna open up a, a browser window here and I'm gonna just log into my retained server here and um, show you um, me accessing this same uh, retained server that's dredging the, the GroupWise system, you know, in this GroupWise mailbox and so forth that, that uh, I've shown you here. So I'm gonna go to this mailbox Okay, um, and you see messages right up to yesterday that are sitting inside of, this is my production retain server, okay? Now, um, the, the next thing that I wanna demonstrate for you is, is that um, reload for retain backs up my uh, retain server, you know, once a day. Uh, in fact, no, I've even got what's called mirroring turned on, but we'll, we'll talk about that in a moment. But it's backing up my uh, retain server constantly, um, and then once a night, um, it does kind of like a full backup, not just a mirror backup, and uh, this full backup routine in conjunction with it, what happens is, is, um, is the uh, data is replicated over to my reload server, okay, so 10.1.273, so you notice here, my retained server is 10.1.273, my reload server 101273. There's a whole nother instance of retain running on the reload server. Okay. And in fact, I've turned on, there's a feature in reload for retain called auto reload. You've heard that from my, my last presentation. So it's the idea that, hey, um, if now this would only be really all that useful in a MySQL environment, but um, what happened was, was my MySQL database was exported from my retained system right along with my blobs, my indexes and so forth. And now it's fully hosted over on the reload server. So I can click here and say, use local retain server, okay, because we've turned on auto reload. So just you can see this, here's 10.1.272, here's 10.1.273. This is the, this is the instance of retain running on my reload server, okay? So I'm gonna log in as my, uh, admin user, okay, and go to search messages, okay, go to browse, go to my user, and sure enough, you can see that this is an exact duplicate of um, my system over here, okay, so because, uh, you know, no, no activity has gone on uh, since then. And so, you know, the, the backup that went on yesterday is what we're observing, okay? Now, <clears throat> what's cool about this is, is you know, it's not just, uh, I wanna show you here, um, if, you know, okay, so you see the message body, right? Um, so um, that shows me that the blobs are there and, and, and so forth. Um, and I'm gonna go to like, you know, I want to get to where I can show you an attachment to. That'd be kind of, okay, here we go. So here we go. We got messages. We've got message body. Um, we've got a attachment. Um, here's the atta attachment that came down. So every component of the retained system has been replicated over to my reload for retain server <clears throat> and not only that it's been replicated over to this server also okay 101274 just like reload for groupwise reload for retain allows you to mirror your data um, or back it up whatever you want to call it to um, up to three other servers um, with each backup set that it sends off. And so what's cool is, is when it does that MySQL dump, it only does the dump one time and then it can replicate it to up to three other servers, that one same uh, dump uh, file that it sends over. And then what happens is the reload for retain server imports it into a database and it's then um, available to me. And so so literally push button disaster recovery is just like you just turn on, sorry here, I've got to get over here. Okay, um, I'm gonna do stop local retain server, okay. And um, I'm gonna go in now and I'm gonna say configure retain, I'm gonna say configure disaster recovery. He says, hey, um, I'm gonna be using this uh, MySQL database uh, called retain. Here's my user password um, and I enable disaster recovery and it says, okay, just wait for about five minutes and you will have a fully functional, you know, retain server um, running 
um, here um, on the reload server. So um, when we're in disaster recovery mode, it's a little bit different than um, when we just have it turned on. Um, and what that, in disaster recovery mode, that means, hey, I won't take any incoming data from the other retained server because in theory it's down. And so <clears throat> we've now enabled disaster recovery. And here in a moment, when it's completely come up, um, I'll be able to click on this and log in um, to the retain system that again is hosted here on the reload server. So what I'm trying to, you know, and, and without having really been able to show you this fully, you know, um, what I'm trying to demonstrate is, is here I have this retain server that now we're simulating as though it's down and uh, my retain system is going to be fully functional here on 10.1.273. And then I can flip a DNS address if you've got a DNS address for your retain server and bink the users are up and running over on your retain system sitting on the reload server. Okay, so uh, any questions of, about, about this uh, functionality that I'm speaking about? It didn't look like any uh, questions okay. came through right now. That's fine. Then I, and then what I'm going to do then is uh, I'm just going to explain to you um, a little bit more about how this works, okay? Reload for retain. Um, now, if you're on MySQL, we are considered a complete 100% backup solution for um, retain, okay? Every component is backed up, right down to some of the uh, configuration files and so forth that we then put in place over on the reload server. Um, and uh, we're still waiting for this to come up. Okay, hey, look at this. All right, so admin guava, okay? Uh, oh, now you know my password. <laughs> anyway, so now, um, there we go. There's my uh, retain system fully functioning over on the reload server as if we had a disaster. Okay, so back to what I'm saying is, is we fully, we back up every component of your retain server if it's on MySQL. If you're on MSSQL or Oracle, for example, um, we don't back up the database. We leave that to you. You've got to do that component, but we back up the indexes and, and the archives. Um, the, the reason that um, so many solutions have a problem backing up retain is that the retain blob files, you know, um, group-wise blob files, are spread amongst 256 directories. Retain blob files are spread amongst 16 point, you know, uh, 16.7 million directories. Okay, so when a backup software approaches that, it's kind of got two problems. One, it's got to iterate through 16.7 million directories, seeing if there's new files. It also looks to see if any of the blob files in those 16.7 million directories have actually changed. Well, they never change, okay? Just like group-wise, a blob file never changes. And so that's kind of like a needless exercise for the backup software, but it doesn't know that. But Reload for Retain understands how Retain is architected, and so it knows it doesn't have to be looking to see if any of the blob files have changed. It just needs to see if new blob files have come in. And those new blob files, they're all registered inside of the retained database, you know, be it on MySQL, MSSQL, or Oracle. And so, um, so we, um, uh, after the initial time of doing a backup, so the initial backup of your, of your retain system with Reload for Retain, it'll take a while. In fact, I've had people where it's taken weeks, okay, literally, um, for that very first time, because we, we have to do the backup in exactly the same manner everyone else does the very first time. But then after that, we, all, we go to the database and we get the, you know, from the database exactly where the blob files are, and then we can replicate those blob files um, very, very quickly. About 5,000 a minute is, is what I've been seeing here in the lab, and um, and so uh, th that's the that's the key point is that reload for retain is backing up your system very very quickly using a lot less resources um, rather than sitting there. I, I I've talked with multiple customers that they've got these solutions in place that kind of try to keep track of. Um, all of the data that's come in, and then they um, they consistently keep track of that, and then they try and mirror that data. The problem is, is they degrade the performance of the live retain system simply so that they have a backup and disaster recovery solution. Uh, Reload for retain doesn't sit there and have to torment your live system looking for stuff on disk. It's just as a simple database query that takes a second just down an index and finds its data that way.
Um, our time's about up. There's one last thing I want to talk about, and that's mirroring. So it's the ability inside of Reload for Retain to go in and say, hey, um, mirror this data. Here's the difference between a mirror and a backup. A mirror is a continuous backup. So it's the notion of, hey, um, just as soon as something comes into the retain system, it will be mirrored, replicated to the the other location or locations, you know, with reload servers. And um, and then what's really powerful is, is if you set up a master slave to your database, so I've done this with now a couple customers, we set up a MySQL master slave of the database. And so MySQL is taking care of replicating the, the database information and reload for retain is taking care of replicating all the rest of the data. And so, um, um, you know, it's not like we're, we don't even have a 24 hour, you know, window that there's a backup going on. We have this continuous backup that's going on. So super powerful, highly recommend that you talk to, if you've got retained, that you talk with your, your salespeople. It's a very, very uh, uh, solid product. Um, and uh, what's been really nice is, is the way Retain is architected, although there's some things that are kind of difficult, uh, because everything's in one database, it's a lot easier to back up than group-wise, quite frankly. And uh, if you understand its architecture um, using uh, Reload for Retain. So there you go. There's a, my little spiel on Reload for Retain, and I'll turn the time back over to you, Q. Okay, great. Thanks, Tay, and thanks everyone for being here and for your interest in this webinar. Um, as I stated before, this webinar has been recorded, so uh, we'll send you an email with the link to the to um, the webinar recording. Um, thanks again, Tay, for your inf for this information, and uh, thanks everyone for being here. We'll see you on the next one.